I'm going to show you how to put together um, a self-watering personal cultivation setup that triggers and schedules lighting as well. So this is going to water based on soil moisture with a custom watering profile. It's going to schedule lighting. We're going to have a water level sensor switch and this level switch will is designed to protect the pump. This pump needs to run fully submerged under water um, to stay protected. So we're going to show you how to connect all these. We're also going to show you how to connect this relay module board to the Space I.O. board, as well as set up the wiring for that. We're going to show you how to connect the moisture sensor to the board as well. Um, and then we're also going to show you how to add on either a uh, submersible temperature sensor or a second um, level switch if you want notifications when the water's getting low as opposed to um, once it's already out. So we'll show you how to set all these up, connect them to the board. These systems can support submersible water pumps, which can be plugged into one of the two motor switch channels here, here. Um, you could also plug in an LED strip here um, if you wanted to. So you could do run two pumps, you could run an LED strip. Uh, we don't sell air filter or air pumps, but there's a, you could also run a small air, air pump here, uh, and we'll show you in later videos how to do that. But um, for for this setup for the single self watering pot, where we're running a pump here and an LED strip here for for the one you saw in that video. So all you have to do to connect them is simply just plug it in. Very simple, and then just log into the Adoja panel, and you would uh, set this up as under motor switch channel one for the device profile. That's where you'd set up and configure it. So the water level sensor switch um, the, can be plugged into two different places. Um, for the lower one, we're gonna plug it into this far left uh, pin out right here. And, that just, and the other place you can connect it is on these far two left pins here. If you look at that. So you could also connect um, Obviously, this other second level switch here. So this is what you would use if you wanted a warning level switch as opposed to the stop level switch. Or you could plug in the uh, submersible temperature sensor on this far left channel. And so what you want to do is just make sure you have the yellow wire towards the left of the board like that. And now you've got a submersible temperature sensor channel there. Here's the moisture sensor and it, it's very simple to connect. All you got to do is you've got some analog pins right here. You would just want to slide it on this on these three pins there if you can see where I plug that in and with the blue wire down and the black wire closest to the board. Now we're gonna show you how to connect the relay board to the Space I.O. board. You can buy these already connected if you want them, but you, it's easiest just to pull off the shield. And as you can see, you've got two mounting holes here and here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these, um, the board mounts, and you, you want to take the nut, put the board mounts through the bottom of the board, and then just screw the nut on. And it helps to have a tool um, to tighten them, whether you're using pliers or... Um, there's special tools to, to, to get these kind of on here firm and tight. And so once you've got your mounts secured to your IO shield, what you want to do is just basically um, just kind of screw your relay shield on. Okay, so before I connect the relay board, it's easiest to go ahead and connect the wiring for the relay. And what's cool about this space board is you got some extra pinouts down here. And the far, farthest two on the left are uh, two ground pins. And then you have two 3.3 uh, .3 volt pins, two 5 volt pins, and then two VN pins, which are the voltage of whatever you've got plugged in the back. So these will be 12 volts in the case of everything that we ship. Um, uh, and so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to need a ground pin for the relay and we're also going to take a we're going to be powering it with uh, powering the relay itself with 5 volts so um, put one wire on any of these two bottom pins and one wire on any of these second uh, the third or the fourth pin from the right and then it's once you have those plugged in it, you can go ahead and close it up. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ground pin and I'm just gonna bring it around and plug it into this pin here. See if you can see that labeled. Yeah, ground, N1, N2, and VCC. The VCC is where we're gonna go ahead and plug our voltage in. So our five volts, we're gonna plug that into VCC. Okay, so now we've got our ground and our power applied to the relay. If we wanted to use a separate power source, not from our board itself, which you can do to, um, it, it makes your devices more safe and protects them from the actual electrical current supply that we're gonna plug up to the relay. Um, you'd wanna do that in more uh, industrial solutions, uh, non-mission critical apps. Um, if you guys are running serious setups, you'd probably wanna use separate power supplies. Um, but once you've got those connected, all you've got to do is connect your controls in one and in two. For this setup, um, we're, we're using a motion detector in the video, but for the relay, um, to control both relays independently, we need both of these I.O. ports. Uh, and we're not going to, whereas the motion detector takes up one. So plugging in both of these in one and in twos to activate those separately we would come right here on this pin and right here on this pin. Now, these are the digital I.O. pins and if you look at them you get Dig I.O. 1, Dig I.O. 2 and the signals are on the far left pins. These other two pins is a 3 volt and a ground going from left to right so you've got the digital pin, a 3 volt and a ground on each of the digital I.O. channels. You can see that labeled underneath right there. But that's simple. That's how you connect your relay. It's just four wires. It's ready to go. And then what you want to do is just plug your shield back in and make sure you get your pins all lined up neatly. And so that's how you connect your relay. Okay, so wiring up this relay is really easy. You've got three... Um, places where you can plug in a wire for each relay. You've got your normally open pin, your com pin, which you always use, and your normally closed pin. So the difference is just choosing between your normally open and your normally closed pin. For the normally open pin, the relay um, will remain switched off until it's switched on. And for the normally closed pin, whatever you have plugged to the relay will be on until you switch it off. So we're gonna do the normally open um, and the comm, so basically we're just going to take our two wires. Uh, we spliced a wire from our electrical AC wire. Um, and you just need one of the wires if you're running on a two wire, but you just basically cut it in half and you insert one end into the comm and the other end into the normally open. And you've got screw terminals here up top, so you have to unscrew those and then put the wires in and then clamp them down. We've got a uh, power strip and that's what this is, so we're basically plug our power strip into our relay, into the normally open, and into the comm pins. And that's how you uh, connect your relay up. So um, we'll go ahead and show you how to program this now.